speak to Pastor Abel now, to speak to our hearts. For we give you the praise and the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 12. Like I said earlier, today we're starting, or preparing to start, our fall spiritual growth campaign. And for those of you who are new, every year we take six weeks uh, out of the church to regroup and, and to join together to try and learn and grow together closer to God in certain areas. And, We've looked at finding our purpose, and we've looked at developing community. This year, we're going to be looking at how do we overcome life's biggest struggles. As I was praying over the last several months, I was just saying, God, what is it that you want us to focus on? And, and what is it that you want us to really emphasize this fall in our church? And one of the things that kept reoccurring over and over in my head is that people are genuinely hurting in life. Uh, people are really struggling with different things. And, and, and as I was continuing to pray, God just kept revealing some certain areas that people are struggling in, like in their marriages. And some people are struggling with raising kids in this world that we live in. And other people are struggling with, the, with stress and just being so overwhelmed. And others are wondering what God is doing in their life. And is he really concerned about the daily things in our lives? And so as I was preparing this and I was asking people, what are you struggling with? And God gave me this series that we're going to be looking at over the next six weeks. Now, what is the spiritual growth campaign? Well, it's we're going to take six weeks and we're going to be looking at six different things over the next six weeks where people are struggling. And not only am I going to be preaching about that, but in the small groups, we're going to be taking a look at each of those things on a week-by-week -week basis, and we're going to look at those. And in your small groups, we're going to be giving you a 40-day uh, journal, a devotional that will help you and follow right along this. And one of the other things that we're going to be doing is memorizing scripture verses, you know, <coughs> trying to find out what God is doing in our lives and really just hiding his word in our heart so that you and I can trust him a whole lot more. And if you've never done anything like this before, I just want to challenge you to come and be a part of it. It's going to be a really exciting time where we get closer to one another in our small groups, where God is really going to speak to us. And, you know, like I said, we've all had friends and neighbors and family who are struggling. And so what is God's answer to those biggest struggles that we're facing? I want to encourage you to, to invite people to come during this series and, and to just really fill this place up. Another thing that we're going to be doing is a church-wide mission project in which we not only uh, provide for the people here in our church and the surrounding area, we're going to be doing a thing called Operation Christmas Child in which we provide gifts to, pe to, other, to kids who live in third world countries who who may not have an opportunity to receive a, a Christmas present. And so as a church, we're going to focus on that and how we can bring some joy into some people's lives this Christmas season. Well, if you have your Bibles and, uh, and you have your outlines, let's go ahead and, and pull those out. It looks like this from your bulletin this morning. We are not just going to take a quick look at life's struggles. Uh, I think if we just kind of just go through this really fast, I think we're going to miss what God really wants to do in our lives. The things that we're struggling with, how God really wants to heal us. So we're going to take 40 days to do that. This morning I want to look at the subject of when struggles come, where is God? I'm sure you've asked that question before. Yesterday I was at a funeral. And I, and I, I don't like funerals, to be honest with you, perfectly honest. I don't like them. I know that followers of Christ, they go to heaven, but it's a really emotional time, and, and uh, I'm pretty sensitive when it comes to people's feelings, I think, anyway, especially when they're hurting, and especially when they're sitting right in front of me, and they're, they're in pain, and I went to this funeral, and it, and it wasn't a normal funeral, when, when you think somebody's lived a long life, and somebody has, has experienced all this stuff, it was for an infant, and an 11-month-old, and, and as I was watching the family, and I didn't really know them that well, I knew the grandmother, and, and I was watching the family and just seeing the pain and the anguish, and, and, and I, I just thought that they would be thinking, God, what, where are you? You know, where were you when this happened? You know, a lot of people say, 
God, why did you stop this from happening or occurring in my life? And the reality is uh, that God knows our pain. And, and while he may not stop everything, that God will see us through everything that we go through. Now, I want you to notice this on your outline. Let's pull it out. Let's look at the very top verse on your outline. If you don't have an outline, you can look up here at the screen at the very first verse. It's in John 16, 23. Jesus is talking, and he's got some news for his followers. Now, I just want us to read this out loud together, okay? Um, you can take a look up here at the screen if you want. Let's read it out loud with some summer's end enthusiasm. You guys with me? Let's read it out loud with some excitement, okay? Here we go. Jesus says these words in John 16, verse 23. Notice what he says. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Now, isn't that just great news? Jesus, right before he's going to his father, right before he goes to the cross, he looks at his disciples and he says, look, in this world, you're going to have problems. You're going to have struggles in your life. There's going to be times when you're hurting in your life, when life is difficult, and when it's a struggle to get up sometimes. And, but he says this, but take heart. You might want to circle those words. Take heart. It, it, it means be strong. It means be of courage. It says, when you're facing struggles, struggles, take heart knowing this. Now notice the rest of it. Because I have overcome the world. That Jesus Christ has conquered death. That in him we can have joy even though we're suffering and even though we're in pain. That God still brings us joy. And, and Jesus says, look, in the world you're going to have problems. But take heart. Be courageous. I have overcome the world. Now, where is God when difficult times happen? I want you to notice this next verse in Psalm 34. And, and just notice where it says God is. It says this, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Let me ask you the question. Where is God close? He's close. The Bible says that when we are struggling, when we're brokenhearted, when we're going through difficult times in our life, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And notice the rest of it. He rescues, you might want to circle that word, rescues those who are what, guys? Crushed in spirit. Have you ever felt like that? Uh, Brokenhearted? Uh, like life was out of control? Like you didn't really know what you were going to do next? Like, where were you going to turn? Because the world seemed to be coming down around you. And yet the Bible says, look, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those who are crushed in spirit. If you've ever had a problem, know that God is right there and he wants to rescue you from it. He wants to walk you through it. Notice the next verse on your outline. Psalm 147 verse 3 says this. He, God, heals the brokenhearted. And notice this. He binds up their wounds. If you've ever been brokenhearted, the Bible says that when you're struggling, run to God. Now, I don't know why it is, but our normal reaction when we're going through a difficult time is to avoid God. God, I'm going through a difficult time in my life, but I'm just going to do it on my own, God. I know that you're there. I know that, that I should go to church. I know that I should be involved, but God, I'm just going to handle it on my own. And yet the Bible says that God heals the brokenhearted. You know, if you've ever struggled, the Bible says God wants to heal you. And notice this, he binds up their wounds. I remember when my daughter was little, she was just learning how to walk. And, and she was walking, and you know how kids are when they're walking, they're kind of unstable, and, and you never know what's going to happen. And, and sometimes she'd fall, and sometimes she'd do great. And she was walking in the room, and there was a, there was a blanket on the floor, and, and I'm, I'm noticing this, I'm watching this, and I see my daughter struggling to walk through it, and she trips over the blanket, and she hit what I thought was just the wall, okay, which, you know, that's a hard thing in, in itself for a little child to hit head first into a wall, but what actually happened was she hit the nightlight, she hit the nightlight, and, and uh, I didn't really know what was going on, but I knew that when she came up, 
And I went to grab her and she was crying. My hand was wet. And, and as I turned on the light, it was full of blood. And what actually happened, she had cut her eye on the saint. And, you know, as a father, I, I grabbed her up. I scooped her up in my arms. I, I took her to the sink. I rinsed it off. And I put my, head up, my hand on her head. And I put a towel on her head. And I just wanted to bind up her wounds.